This is motion in one dimension. Okay. So what what is the meaning of motion? Suppose this is your time, t is equal to zero, and you are standing at this position. After some time, you are at this position. Let us take t is equal to one hour. Okay. Now you are changing your position, isn't it? Yes or no? Then we can say that you are in motion. Now this is along a single axis. If it's along a single axis, we will call such type of motion as a 1D motion or one-dimensional motion. Okay. This we will call it as a one-dimensional motion. Okay. Now this one-dimensional motion it may be the motion may be horizontal as i discussed earlier this this motion it is a horizontal you can go here or you can come back that that is going to be a horizontal motion suppose you are dropping a ball and that ball is bouncing after hitting the ground it is bouncing so what type of motion is that? It's also a one-dimensional motion that is happening in a straight path and that is nothing but the vertical motion. Suppose the object is moving in a slanting path. So that is nothing but the slanted path. Okay. So this is a horizontal and vertical and a uh, slanting, slanted one. Now, whenever you are discussing any motion, there is an observer. Okay. And that observer is observing the motion of an object. Now, that observer has to sit somewhere, isn't it? That we will call it as a frame of reference. Very simple example for our frame of reference is a Cartesian coordinate system. X, Y, and Z. Now, if I can take this point as a point P, wherein this, the object is at position P. And what about this point? This, this point we'll call it as an origin. Okay, and this is the point where the object is at, sitting at that point, P. How can you specify that po position? And we're using the coordinate, X, Y, Z. This we will call it as a frame of reference. Using the frame of reference, using the frame of reference, an observer can observe the position of an object. Okay. So, the a very simple example for this is a Cartesian coordinate system. Coordinate system. Next. What are the types of frame of reference? Frame of reference types. There are two types. One, it is an initial frame of reference. Another one, it's a non-initial frame of reference. What is the difference between initial and non-initial? In this one, the frame of reference is either it is at rest, or it is moving with uniform velocity. Then I can call this as a initial frame of reference. Non-initial means what? Here, the 
it is moving with a acceleration a is not equal to zero or it is the accelerated frame of reference so this we will call it as a non initial frame of reference so we discussed the motion and the frame of reference okay. next important term is rest and motion Suppose this is a table. On the table, you can see so many books. Now, this book is at rest. With respect to what? With respect to table. Another scenario which I am asking: there is sun, and Earth is revolving around the sun. now with respect to now what about this book with respect to sun it is in motion so with respect to sun this is in motion okay now can i say that an object which is at rest always at rest no so there is no absolute rest and absolute motion they are relative rest and motion they are relative okay next classification of motion this one we already discussed it earlier classification of motion what are the types of motion if it's passing only along a straight path or or the one only one coordinate is changing We'll call it this a one D motion. If two coordinates are changing, suppose this is a wall, and on the wall a small ant is crawling all over the wall. Now two coordinates are changing. I can take this as x and this as y, and I can say that two coordinates are changing, so it is going to be a two dimensional motion. Suppose there is a mosquito in a room, and mosquito the is flying it. so what type of motion is that it is a three dimension motion three coordinates are changing so i can take this as my x and this as my this as my y and this as my z okay okay next point of when can i treat an object as a point object if the distance traveled is very large when compared to the size size is very small when compared to the distance it's tra travel then i can call take that object as a point object for example you can take a small tray or you can take a tray it is moving from let us take southern part of india to northern part of india uh or else like a little stake somewhere here west to east something like that then i can say that the distance between these two parts are very large and the train is size is very small then i can treat it as a point of it with respect to the planet earth earth is revolving around the sun okay but the distance the earth is covering it is very large so i can treat earth as a point object okay okay so next before going to the next one let me discuss a little bit about the coordinate systems once again this is my origin 
Cartesian coordinate system or whatever it is. This is zero. To my right, I will take it as a positive. To my left, I will take it as a negative. This I can mark it as one, two, three, like that. Okay, numbering, I can do it. And to the left, I will take it as minus one, minus two, minus three, and more. Okay. If it's a 2D, I can take like this, X and Y, and uh, this uh, is going to be zero and zero. And this is going to be same, one, two, and three, four, like that. Here, minus one, minus two, minus three, like that. This is going to be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, like that. This is going to be minus one down. It is going to be minus two, minus three, minus four, like that. This is the first. And what about the 3D? 3D, I can go like this, X, Y, and this is Z. And this is, oh, sorry, not Z here. This is Z. Okay. Like, okay. And here also, I can do the marking in the same way. This is going to be positive plus 1 plus two like that. And what about this point? This point I can treat it as zero, zero, zero. Why this third one? Because since three coordinates are there. This is positive and this is negative. This is positive and this is negative. Down, it is negative. Okay. Now let us discuss distance and displacement. Okay. This is distance and displacement. Let us discuss one by one. Okay. You are stand you are at this position A and there is another point B. And you want to go from A to B. You can go from A to B in many ways. Either you can go like this or you can go like that. Or you can take a deviated turn like that. Or you can go very straight path, you can take it, okay? All these are paths, okay? This is nothing but, and what is the length of these paths? We'll call it as a path length. This is nothing but a distance. Distance is nothing but path length between two points, we'll call it as a distance. Okay. But there is a shortest path between that we will call it as a displacement out of this one two three four all of them are distance itself but out of this one of them is going to be shortest path what is that three so three is the out of this and i think three is the shortest path we will call it as a displacement. What about the SI unit? It is nothing but meter. This is also meter. SI unit is meter. Okay. Next. I will come up with one example. Suppose a person is standing at this position. Now, how can you calculate the displacement? Displacement is nothing but final point minus initial point. Okay. Based on that, there are three conditions. Suppose final point x2 is greater than x1. So, what will happen? The displacement is positive. If x2 is less than x1, what will happen? It is negative. If x1 is so if x2 is equal to x1, what will happen at that time? This displacement is zero. So let us discuss this one by one. Suppose this is a going to the right. It reaches just at this point 50. And it is starting from origin zero. Now what about the displacement here? Displacement is nothing but what is the final point here? 50. So 50 minus what is the initial point here? Zero, so this is going to be 50. 
what about the dis uh, distance here distance is 50 in this case i can say that distance is equal to displacement okay now scenario 2 scenario 2 this is one now the scenario 2 it is going from uh Uh, or else. this is zero it is going to left minus 50 reaches here now what is the displacement in this case displacement is nothing but final point is 50 initial point is this and answer is minus 5 in this case displacement is negative what about the distance here? Distance is nothing but still the same. It is going to be magnitude of displacement that is going to be 50. And the third one, object, it is going to write 50, coming back also 50. What about the displacement? Since the starting position and initial position is same, I will write in the displacement is zero. What about the distance? Since uh, distance it is equal to 50 plus 50, 100. So we can say we can say that distance can be greater than or equal to displacement. Okay. Next. I will give a simple question. Before going to that. Before going to that, uh, let us take a simple example. Oh, okay. Uh, very, we, these concepts you learned in your lower class, I will discuss it once again. You have a right angle, a triangle. A, B, C. Suppose this is 3. Or, uh, this is going to be the base. This is altitude and the side opposite to the 90 degree right angle is going to be hypotenuse. What is Pythagoras theorem? Hypotenuse is nothing but square root of base square plus altitude square. Some numbers you can remember that we will call it as a Pythagoras triplet. 3, 4, 5 is such a number. What is the meaning of that? Suppose you have a triangle like this. This is 3 and this is 4. And obviously the other one is going to be 5. Yes. And suppose the side is going to be, let us take the side is going to be 9. This is 12. Now what is this side? Very easy way of finding it. You can multiply this with a 3. When you are multiplying this with a 3, so this entire thing will become 9, this will become 12. Obviously, the third one is going to be 15. So rather than going with a conventional method, you, can, you will get the answer as 15. Okay? So if you want, you can calculate like this, to square root of 9 square plus 12 square. That is going to be 81 plus 144. That is going to be 225. That is nothing but the 15. Okay? So, now based on that, uh, we can uh, go to the next problem. Uh, we will discuss one question. Okay. We will discuss one question. A person is going from a school and he, that person walks uh, some 
50 meter to some place. Let us take this uh, place. And then from there, he walked towards his friend's house. That is, this is friend's house. Let us take this as A. And he walks towards B. And that is going to be how much that is going to be again, it is going to be 40 meter. And then from there again, he is traveling, that person is traveling to the south and reaches the point uh, C. And uh, th this distance, let us give it as a 20 meter. Now the question is, what is the distance? And uh, second part of this question is, what is the displacement? So the person is going from his house and reaches the point A and from the point A it is traveling to B and from the B it is traveling to C. Okay. So if you see the direction wise it is going to be the north, south, uh, west and east. Okay. So how can you calculate it? Distance is going to be EC1. So first it is traveling 50, followed by 40, then 20. So 50 plus 40 plus 20, that is going to be 110 meter. Displacement, you are starting at this initial point. This is your initial position. And this is your final position. So initial to final, that length you have to find. How can you do that? You just have to construct a right angle triangle. How uh, this is 20, B to C is 20. So let us take this point also 20. A to H is going to be 50. So down this much point, it is going to be 50 minus 20. That is equal to 30. This is how much? AB and this line is parallel to each other. That This is 40. This is going to be 40. So this is, if you re remember the Pythagorean triplet, this is 3, 4, 5. Multiply with 10. You will get this as 30, 40, 50 triangle. So obviously the third side is going to be 50. So this displacement is nothing but 50. If you don't remember the Pythagoras triplet, you can go with the conventional method, square root of 30 square plus 40 square, which is nothing but 900 plus 1600. And this is going to be how much is that square root of 2500, that is equal to 50. You have to write the unit, 50 meter. Okay. okay. We will discuss one more question. We will discuss one more question. Okay. A person is moving in a circular path. It is going in a circular path. A, B, C, and D. It is moving in a circular path from and covers one fourth of the circular path. So person is covering one fourth of the circular path. Person is moving one fourth of the circular path. Okay. So Person is moving one fourth of the circular path. Okay. So it is covering one fourth of the circular path. Now the question is what is the ratio between distance by displacement? Distance by displacement ratio. This is the question. Okay. 
So a person is going from A to C, A to B, and whose radius we can find from here itself. So let me draw this. It is covering one fourth of the circle. If you take the circle, divide the circle into four equal parts, and it is covering only one part. It is covering it. That is from A to B. So this is going to be R. and this is going to be r and distance from a to b shortest path length between a to b that is going to be this and this is how much is that 90 degree and this is going to be how much if you take a right angle triangle this is 90 this is r r and this is going to be square root of r square plus r square that is equal to how much Root two r, r square plus r square. That is equal to root two r square. That is equal to root two r. Okay. But what about the distance? Distance is going to be the circumference. This path, this this length. How can you find this? The total circumference is going to be two pi r. Half of this two pi r is the total. And again, half of this is going to be how much? Uh, pi r. Again, half is going. Half of that is going to be this much. Okay. So this cancels. So this is going to be pi r by two. That is going to be pi r by two. That is the distance. and they were asking for the ratio they were asking for the ratio distance is pi r by 2 distance is pi r by 2 and the displacement is root 2 r by 2 Root two r, sorry, not root two r. This is going to be pi by two root. Two. This is going to be pi by two root. Two. This is going to be pi by root. Two. Next. the same question we will discuss from a different point of view this is the question time taken to complete one round it is equal to 20 seconds and uh, by the end of 80 seconds that means One minute and twenty uh, seconds. One minute twenty seconds. What is the displacement and what is the distance? This is the question. Okay. What is the distance and what is the displacement? Okay. Okay. Now, if the time taken to complete one round is twenty seconds, and the time taken to complete a what is it by the end of time one minute twenty seconds? Okay. Now the question is, what is the displacement and what is the distance? You are starting from point A, and this is B, and all. To complete one round, it will take twenty seconds. So, what is the time time taken to complete from going from A to C via B C? C? It will take time of ten seconds. One minute twenty seconds is nothing but the eighty seconds. 
So for one round, let us write down here. For one round, it is twenty seconds. Okay. Two rounds, and the twenty seconds. Three rounds. It is another twenty seconds. Uh, I will change the value to seventy seconds, so uh, so that you will be able to do that. I will change this value to seventy seconds, uh, so not the eighty seconds. No, I will change this value to seventy seconds. Yes. One minute. I will change the value to seventy seconds. Okay, so this is going to be one minute and ten seconds. Okay, so this is going to be one round twenty seconds, two rounds twenty twenty. So by the end of three rounds, it is going to be sixty. remaining 10 more remaining 10 seconds so in the te- next 10 seconds you will go from a to a to b you will go so which means initially you are at a and finally you are at b so which means a to b so what is your distance displacement here displacement is nothing but 2 into 50 that is equal to 100 meters distance is going to be a little tricky portion distance is going to be little tricky okay so why it is going to be tricky because uh, you have to calculate in three rounds for one round you will be covering the circumference of the circle which is nothing but the 2 pi r so three rounds it is going to be 2 pi r 3 into 2 pi r that is going to be 6 pi r okay next after that they, you are covering the this is going to be 6 pi r after that you are covering half of it half round half round which is nothing but the pi r so this is going to be 7 pi r so 6 pi r plus pi r that is nothing but 7 pi r so your displacement is 100 meter and distance is 7 pi r meter okay. so that much is the case and hope it is clear for everyone and we will in the next session we will discuss a uh, speed uh, and velocity we will discuss it and uh, thank you